In this video, we want to take a look at how we can create these annotation cells that allow us to control the border as well as the text, the computer text within the cell. And if you remember in the prior video, we copied over some cell libraries for plan view, for profile view, cross section view, etc., from the delivered workspace. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up the plan view imperial labeling cell library and take a look and see how these are designed. And one of the first things that you'll notice in these cell libraries is the naming convention of the different models. Remember I mentioned in an earlier video that they all start with a prefix underscore LBL underscore, which puts those at the top alphabetically sorted of the cell list so that when you go to use the labeler, you'll see these at the top. So that's just a little tip that I came up with that seems to make things a lot easier when navigating that drop-down list. So we can take a look here at some of the cells that are pre-created for us. Uh, take a note as to where the insertion is. Uh, you can see that the zero, zero point on this particular one. Uh, lots of different examples to look at here. Uh, you have your north and easting, your XY coordinates. You have the uh, bearing and distance that you can place along a line. Uh, we already took a look at this example, the label plan alignment name along, and notice how that's offset from the origin of 00. zero. Uh, label plan station partial. Again, very significant where you place these. Notice the imaginary box, and we'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, here's an example of the plan bearing uh, distance for microstation. And if you remember when we talked about creating favorites, I said if you wanted to label something that was a microstation line and not a civil line, you would have to have a microstation line drawn ahead of time that you can select. And so and when I built this one, that particular line was there. I deleted the line so it didn't know what to do with the text. But if I were then to use this label on a microstation line, it would change it from the uh, hash symbols over to the proper uh, values. And then lastly is the label plan alignment name. And so this is for plan view. We'll take a look at the profile view next here. So here is the cell library for profiles. So we have uh, station and elevation, a uh, partial station again, uh, profile slope, profile station, parabola length, arc length, and elevation. And so just pay special attention to how these are orientated um, and we're going to talk about that frame in just a minute. And then lastly if we take a look at the uh, cross section you're going to see that we have the offset and elevation, just the offset and just the elevation. Again with the imaginary frame. So the reason that we draw the frame in here is so that we can flip the text left to right depending on where the leader is at. If we don't have a frame within the cell it cannot do the flip and that's just that right now a, a limitation of the labeler within connect itself and so that is the way we can work around that. Now what I did on this frame if we take a look at its properties, I put it on a level called draft plan labels and I also put it on a construction class but most importantly I set the color to the background color and so if you look at that you'll see that I've used this 255 and so whatever the color of the drawing is in the background that's going to be that color and also with it being on the construction class if you turn off your construction class it's not going to show up either but it does allow the label to or the leader to go from one side to the other now the other thing that we have to talk about here is how do we build the actual intelligent text we kinda went through this in a prior video if we go over to the text editor, if you remember when we built favorites, we would come in here, we would set our text style, we would put in our prefix if we need one, we would go in here and put in our insert a field, we would select everything, right click and create a text favorite. We want to do all of that except we do not save it as a text favorite. We have to place it in the cell at the proper location. If you try to put a text favorite in this cell model. It will not work. That's just the way that the program is designed right now. And so let me give you an example here. Let's say that we wanted just to recreate what we see here. 
then we're going to go to our computer fields and in this case we're working on our cross-section cell library so we'll go to our cross-section annotation fields and say OK and then in our point we want to compute the elevation and so we have the label format if you want to show master and subunits or use active settings or just the subunits you have your options here and then for the master units I'm just going to use what is active in the drawing I can set a decimal accuracy and here you can put your prefix here as well if you would prefer to do it here in the uh, actual setup of the cell so we select OK to that and that then shows our computer text now when we learned how to do text favorites we would now select this right click and say select text favorite we do not want to do that here when we're creating these annotation cells when you're creating the annotation cells you're simply going to place the text where you want it and then accept it and that's it and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and delete the other entry that I had and so now I have my new entry and again disregard this particular text because it does get recomputed. Now the one thing that you will need to look at is if I select my imaginary box if you will that allows this dimension style to flip left versus right you have to think about what are the most possible digits I would have to set up an elevation label. If I'm in the state of Florida for example they're probably not going to have an elevation of 10,000 or if I'm in the state of Colorado I may have an elevation up in the 5000 range for example and so you have to make sure that this box is big enough to accommodate it. Think of this as representing the left and right margin or the starting point of the leader and so if you think that five digits is enough you can leave this just like it is right here um, if you think that you need more you can simply drag this out crustaceans AccuDraw and then I can just drag this in the uh, positive X direction or the negative X direction and make those adjustments so don't get wrapped up in the fact that the number is bigger here because once it's computed if I only need you know five digits this box is plenty big and it again represents the starting point of those leaders and so this is how we can make our different individual cells that will have the appropriate border that we want and in our case we use the hidden border here if I jump back to our plan view labeling I have a border that I've drawn here that I actually want to see and I put some fillets in for where my lines you know meet each other so I've given you a lot of different examples of how you can set things up and have them label properly in terms of building these annotation cell labels in the next video we're going to take a look at those dimension styles and how we set up those leaders if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series consider subscribing to our channel thank you and see you next time